record it. Um, the other day when I recorded and I tried to upload it, I got a notification that my computer is almost full. So I got to go through and clean off some of these um, recordings uh, that we're doing. Um, so if you haven't already been aware, uh, something came about about the name here recently with Now You See TV, right? Uh, John Pounders did a video coming against the name, um, basically, is what it boils down to. And uh, I felt led by the Holy Spirit to, to do something about that, to reveal something um, that the Father revealed to me, that it is important. Uh, we see this in many scriptures across um, the Bible, that this is the case. So I, I, it kind of blew me away to see this happen, uh, but uh, it, it sparked something in me. And ever since, I've been working on codes based around that, um, whether it's restore the name Yahuwah, uh, call upon the name, uh, and, and such uh, anomalies. So I was going to share some of those with you today that I found. I thought you might be impressed. It, I was kind of blown away at one of the results that I found. Um, and we'll get more into that in just a moment. I did share that with Scott. Is Scott here today? He is not here yet. And um, yeah, so it's never happened to me before where I have found a, a long term. And this happened back to back, guys. I'm searching for restore the name Yahuwah, um, yod heh vav -Hey, right? It comes in at a skip, 22440. And then the very next term I'm looking for on another tab, I'm not even in the same table. I'm looking on another, um, on another tab window I had open up for the code program. And I type in another 10 letters. That first term was 10 letters. The next one was also 10 letters, which is call upon the name Yehoah, yod vav -Hey. And it came up at this same exact skip, 22 and so I'm looking at this. I'm going, wait a minute. Did I, did I type in the same exact term? No. It's 10 letters, 20 letters altogether. So I'm looking at one side. I'm looking at the other, and I'll be doggone. This is the first time this has ever happened where I found two long terms on one cylinder, right? So just to kind of give you a – I don't have anything that's just my <laughs> orange juice glass. One, one term comes up on one side. And you roll that thing around the other side, and the other term comes up on the other side. It is basically um, terms on either side of that cylinder. So I would just like, whoa. So I, that's what I've been working on, it's things about the name. Because, um, you know, the most common misconception mis, um, about the codes is, or, or the, the common thing critics will say is, the codes are not reliable because you can't predict the future. They're not reliable to predict the future, right? Well, first of all, that's starting from the wrong premise in the first place. We shouldn't be concerned about predicting the future, right? You didn't call us to be tarot card readers or uh, doing crystal balls and things like that, right? So he's not going to openly give us an, an avenue to predict the future. However, the future is contained in these codes. There are no questions uh, about that, that they have been revealed before said event uh, in many occasions. Um, so there's no question the past, present, and future is there. It's not the primary use of these uh, programs to search things out that predict the future. Father can give you something. I'm not saying that's not possible, but for the most part, I believe it's to, to reconcile the plain text or, or to pr uh, prove or disprove something uh, concerning the scriptures. Um, and so that's, that's kind of where I am. Um, it, it just, is anybody search anything on the name incidentally that's here? I yes. have. I have. Yes. Yeah. No, but I'm going to start. <laughs> okay. So I, I have one from a year ago, I think, or two, a year and a half ago when I first started doing codes that was um, call upon the name. Wow. Yeah. And so I have that, to go back now and look. And that is encoded um, mm -hmm. a couple of times in there. Mm hmm. I'm going to do it in the Peshitta, see what I can find. Okay. So let me share, share with you guys a couple of things that I found. Look, we'll, we'll go to this one first. This is amazing. So this is Restore the Name, uh, yod Hey vav Hey. right? Um, it comes in a skip of 22440. Um, and um, 
And so just right after I found this, I'm looking at another window and I type in, um, uh, call upon the name. And so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm, I'm going to rotate this cylinder around and show you where it appeared. All right. So here is restore the name, right? But then if, if I rotate this over to the left and we're going to go all almost all the way around and it right about here, we'll see uh, an anomaly that comes into the picture. Let me just keep going here. There it is. This is the very same cylinder, very same skip, guys. Call upon the name Yahuwah. It's almost in the, in the same area, which is all the way up in the, in the Genesis. Um, so that, to me, was just amazing because the fact that we're, we're finding 20-something letters. It's not just the 10-letter long-term that I found, but, but an additional 10 letters, which is on the back side of the cylinder, same exact skip. The father put this on the same cylinder. Now, that is, to me, screams this is significant. There's no doubt about it. It's the, the probability of this happening is uh, astronomical. And I wish I could put that into numbers uh, so, so that that relates uh, the point. But see, we're coming back around the cylinder and, and right up at the top there, as you can see, um, restore the name. Now, how can you call upon the name if, if the name has not been restored? And an argument that um, Brother Pounders had was, in the Mishnah, which is the Talmud, um, it was forbidden to speak the name, to write the name, to discuss the name. Anything about the name, it was forbidden. That is a true statement. But did Yeshua adhere to this? I don't believe he did. The scriptures uh, indicate he did not, right? Uh, matter of fact, he didn't come in his, did you know this? Yeshua did not come in his own name. Were you aware of this, guys? Please tell me you are. Yeah. Most Christians yeah, don't agree with that. Right. Um, most, most Christians won't, won't agree with that statement. They say, no, Yeshua came in his own name. We're supposed to be worshiping Yeshua. He's God, right? Well, let's we, go to some scriptures. We, we say, yeah. Mm -hmm. and he, I, 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 I feel comfortable with saying Yahushua, and that's with the yeah, so he's in the name. Yeah, I want to. I want to show you something. Hey, I my theory just other in other place went on. Look at this. That is the Paleo Hebrew of the Father's name, right? This is Yeshua's name in the Paleo Hebrew. Can you see those letters? Yeah. The first three letters are the same exact letters in Yod Hey Vav Hey. So literally, in the name Yeshua is the Father's name. He came in his Father's name. Let me just take you back to Moses. I'm going to give you two witnesses today. One is Moses and one is Yeshua. Now Moses says in Deuteronomy 32, Give ye, O heavens, I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of Yahuwah. Ascribe ye greatness to our Elohim. So Moses says, I will publish the name. Why? Because it ascribes greatness unto our Elohim. Hiding the name, folks, is not something you want to do. Riding the fence on the name is not something you want to do. I would be rather be called a sacred namer uh, whatever uh, they want to throw at me because on the day of judgment, I will not stand in, a, in shame because of that, folks. That is a good place to be, standing on the name. The scripture says the name is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and are safe, right? So I'm not going to cower and, and uh, you know, hide when it comes to the name. It's going to be published. The scriptures declare it. Matter of fact, uh, if we go to John 5, can you see this or do I need to stop share again? We're at John 5 here. Okay. No, you're good. I see it. Uh, I stand with you, brother. The name is sacred, and uh, I'd rather be standing on yeah. his name 
a sacred name than 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 be in trouble with our heavenly Father. Exactly. So if we go to John five forty three, you we can run down the scriptures here. Search ye the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, but they uh, are which testify unto me, and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men. But I know you, and that you have not the love of Elohim in you. And Yeshua says, I am come in my Father's name. So he did not come in his own name, guys. He tells you that in John. I come in my Father's name, and what does he say? What does he say to those that are, that are hiding the name, and they're, they're cowering from the name, they don't want to get involved in this sacred name, cult, and yada, yada, yada? not receive me. They received him not. They received him not. That to me is blows me away that people would uh, be, and it's not because it's, it's, how do I put this on YouTube to be successful on YouTube? In other words, and not making dividing lines. If you want to appeal to the masses, then you have to appear somewhat neutral on some things divisive issues whether it you know it's pre-trib or, or no pre-trib whether it's you know say the name or don't say the name right they're dividing lines now yeshua said i did not come to bring peace but to divide i, I brought a sword to divide right now there the, the the thing with christians today is oh we're not supposed to be dividing we're supposed to be united in love right you go read john 17 what is yeshua united with the father in the name. He said, Father, I taught them your name. He goes on to say in his prayer, Father, I sealed them in your name. And makes about three more references in, in the name. So it is a big deal. It's not something that we should be, you know, hiding from because it's divisive. Matter of fact, we're supposed to be uniting in it. In John 17, he said, Father, just as I and you are one, let also those you gave me be one with you. And I'm paraphrasing here. So he was trying to unite us under the name. Now I want to show you something that occurred to me just before I came into the class. It is going back to Deuteronomy 32. Now, it is my belief that we can use these codes with the scripture to prove or disprove a doctrine or an argument, or anything. Now, if Moses recorded in Deuteronomy 32 that I will publish the name of Yahuwah, right? And if we want to see this, and here's a, here's a little tip, trip, uh, tip for you, searching codes, is use your interlinear, right? And come down to the Hebrew. And so what we're going to do is go to verse 3 to where he says he proclaims the name, Shem Yahuwah Akra which is um, a kira, you know, is a uh, call upon. So it's Shem, Yahuwah, Akra. Just a little different than call upon the name, which is kira, Shem, Yahuwah, right? Just a little bit. Same letters. It's the same letters, just arranged differently. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go um, to the codes and see if we can find that encoded. And so... If it is encoded, we must understand that it is important. If he's recorded it, not only in the plain text, but also in the hidden text, it must mean something. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to search that together and see what happens. Because here we are at the uh, Torosov window, and we're going to put in, uh, how did that go? Shem Yehua Kira. Yeah, Shem Yehua Kira. So that would be Shem Yehua He Ba He Akra. Aleph Ku Fresh Aleph. I will publish name. We can see it already appears, uh, and we do see it is there encoded. So that's amazing. It appears four times in the plain text and one time encoded. I mean, so I would take that one 
and bring up the matrix. And then uh, I'm going to color this background because uh, the white will burn your eyes. And there we go. Um, I will publish the name. It is encoded in the scriptures there. So that tells me a lot. Just just finding those 10 letters uh, in there. And I can see all, right off the bat, what do we got there? Yahuwah Zavahut. It's, uh, it's sitting on the name. So uh, I will publish the name, and lo and behold, it is actually sitting on a version of the name. That's incredible to me. So we still have, um, look at that, Hagolah. Hagadol, excuse me, Gadol. yod heh vav -Hey. So there's, I could just look here and find all day something in reference to the name um, in the plain text. And, and you'll find this to be true because there are some 400 plus scriptures that deal with the name in some way. Most of them are, uh, incidentally, are in Psalms, which means David had a lot to say about the name. Right? And so there we go. We have a, a fresh new table to uh, to be searching, and I'll be on that this evening. So going back over to what I do have, let's look at some of those. Like this. This is um, restore the name uh, at a very very small skip. This is at eleven oh two. So this is. Uh, virtually in in the prophets, um, you can search just the prophets it's, itself, and you'll find this in this arrangement. So we're going to be scrolling up and down on this side of the cylinder. I just want to cover a couple of the of the ELS terms that I've found so far. The, the netzrim are in here. Um, the sharit, which is the remnant. Look how how the remnant interacts with the restoring of the name. I think it's directly connected um, to the remnant. The et zarah, which is the time of distress. We're told in scriptures that in the time of distress, we're supposed to call upon his name, right? Um, what name are we to call on if we don't know his name, right? So it is important that it is restored. Um, Sharid is also, um, excuse me, Netzarim is also down below here, spanning across. Um, and then we have several references that I highlighted, and, and there's a cluster down below. We'll scroll down to that in just a moment. So let's just cover a couple of these really quick. That's in the bulk of the uh, the actual table there itself. So we're going to be in Zephaniah, running right across the top of Restore the Name. Anybody got any idea where we're headed right here? <laughs> All right, so hang tight. Here's what it says. Uh, the just uh, Adonai is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. I have cut off the nations, and their towers are desolate. I have made the streets waste, none passing by. Their cities are destroyed, so that there is no man, and there is no inhabitant. <laughs> Let me just stay here as, uh, as a caveat. The common thread that I'm seeing in this table with the prophets is there's war and there's tribulation on the earth at this time. And I find it interesting that restore the name is recorded in midst of all of this. Why is that important? Well, we'll, we'll see in just a moment. I have said, surely thou will fear me. Thou wilt receive instruction. So their dwelling should not be cut off. Howsoever I punished them, but, though, but they rose up early and corrupted all of their doings. Therefore, wait upon me, saith Yahuwah, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms and pour upon them mine indignation. This is in war. This is uh, Gog Magog. This is, a, this is um, a Armageddon. He's going to gather all of these nations. You can see the, the uh, preamble of that happening right now with this president we have. Iran, the Gulf uh, Strait of Hormuz, all of that stuff. 
Now, look what he says in verse 9, guys. That runs right across the I mean, this is right there for you to see. You can see there, Shem Yahuwah. For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all, not some, not just the Jews, it says all, call upon the name of Yahuwah to serve him with one consent. That is, to me, a slam dunk. But for some, that's not enough. So we got to have more scriptures, and indeed there are. We go down here to Zechariah, uh, around the 14th chapter. Let's see if i got enough room here. Um, we're going to be starting in uh, verse 5, but I'll get some context here. Uh, and it shall come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed. Every one of his vision he has done, he has prophesied. Neither they swear, uh, they wear a rough garment to deceive. Uh, but he shall say, "I am no prophet. I am a husbandman." Wait a minute. This is this is Amos that says that, right? Yeah, I am a husband. For man taught me to, uh, to keep cattle from my youth. And one shall say unto him, "But these, uh, what are these wounds in thy hands?" And he shall say. Those in which are wounded in the house of my friends. Wait a minute. What am I reading? I'm reading 13. You guys didn't even tell me. <laughs> All right. So hey, brother, you're reading 13. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> we need to be in 14. And they cluster uh, really close together because it's every 100, it's every 1102 letters, right? We're only um, just a small number um, that we're looking at here. So, just around the corner is 14, and we'll start at verse 5. Um, how about 4? That's even better. And, it, and his feet shall stand upon uh, that day upon the Mount of Olives. Whose feet are we talking about? Well, I think you know. Which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst of thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half the mountain shall be moved toward the north and half toward the south. And you shall flee into the valley of, of the mountains, and the valley, in the valley of the mountains shall reach to Azel. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And Yahuwah, my Elohim, shall come, and all his saints with thee. This is the second coming, right? So in the middle of all this war, all this tribulation that's going on, we're calling upon the name, and then suddenly he appears um, in Jerusalem. Uh, then we have here Malachi, and I think uh, you know what is going on here in Malachi. I just mentioned that to you guys. Lost my place. Just a moment ago with, um, you know, everything is so clustered. Hold on just a second, guys. I guess you're doing better, Jonathan. Say again. I suppose you're doing better. Oh, you mean uh, healing? Yes. Yes. I'm able to sit for longer periods. And so uh, here we are. I started verse one, and and now ye. O ye priests, this command is for you. If you will not hear, if you're not laid to heart, give glory to my name, saith Yahuwah Zavot. I will even send a curse upon you. Let me just read that again, okay? Because this is to teachers, to leaders, to priests, uh, to pastors, things like that. And it says, if ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart, to give glory to my name, saith Yahuwah Zavot, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay it to heart. That, you know, what? Okay, so uh, skipping on down, here we are in um, chapter 3, verse 23. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of Yahuwah, and ye shall turn the hearts of the father to the children, the hearts of the children to the father, lest I come and smite 
the earth with a curse. Um, and I do know that off to the side here, and I believe it's right there. Let's read this. Yeah, it's a little further back. Chapter 3, verse 20. Let's start with, with 16. And they that feared Yahuwah, this is you and me. They that feared Yahuwah spoke often to one another. And Yahuwah hearkened, and he heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared Yahuwah. And what? And that thought upon his name. How many here fear, fear the Most High? Everybody. What are we doing right now? We're thinking upon his name. Therefore, the scripture says there is a book of remembrance in heaven with your name in it because of that. And this is what he says about you. They shall be mine, saith Yahuwah Zavahot. In the day that I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. And they shall return and discern between righteous and wicked and between him that serveth Elohim and him that serveth him not. Doesn't it say what is his no man can taketh or something like that? Uh, say again. I thought it said somewhere in scripture that uh, uh, what is his no man can take. I, 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 no, I don't think that's uh, that's here. Yeah. Um, so skipping down a little bit further, we see uh, there's a mention of a Kadosh. His name is Kadosh. So that is. Hang on. Screen's just jumping all over the place. So we're in Psalms. Can you guys see this? This yellow highlighted uh, words here. Yes, I, I can see uh, Kadosh Yahuwah. All right, Kadosh Yahuwah. It is in Psalm 11, verse 4. Here's what it says. <clears throat> um, the Adonai in his holy temple uh, and the Adonai's throne is in heaven. His eyes beheld his eyelids, the children of men. Yeah, so that, that appeared there. Then here's a Korah, Yahuwah, which is, um, you know, calling upon his name. And here we are in verse 18. You'll see with David, it's over and over again. There's something about the name. I will call upon Yahuwah, who is worthy to be praised and shall save me from mine enemies. Uh, and then, yeah, and in verse 7, in distress, I called upon Yahuwah. And he cried I, and cried unto my Elohim. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. Uh, and then the earth shook and trembled. The foundation of the hills were moved and shaking because he was wroth. Uh, we're talking about the second coming. And in every case, all the way down, the common thread is there's tribulation, there's war, the earth is shaken, the earth is turned to blackness, uh, the, the sun, moon, and stars, I mean, Joel is just above this, where the, the, the sun, moon, and stars are blackened. Uh, the, the moon is turned to blood. So the common theme all the way through here is there is great distress, which makes sense because in the day of distress, you call upon his name. Uh, just skipping on down a little bit further. I don't know why I had this highlighted. This is 2223. I will declare thy name unto my brother, and in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. That's right there. Uh, and then skipping over here is uh, 2511. For thy name's sake, O you will pardon my iniquity. So several places where it, it talks about the name. Um, here's another one in Psalm 40. That's interesting. Then the name as Yahuwah. <laughs> Nem Shin Kaf Yod He Wav He can't miss it. Yeah. Uh, I also th I thought this was interesting here. I waited patiently for Yahuwah. He inclined his ear to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the horrible pit and out of the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. He hath put a new song in my mouth, 
even praise unto our Elohim. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in Yahuwah. And then uh, verse 5, blessed is a man that maketh what? Now, here's where King James is, is a problem because it says, blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. But that is not actually what it says in the Hebrew. It says, blessed is the man that maketh the name Yahuwah his trust. It says, Shmi yod heh vav heh. This is Psalm 40, verse 5. Blessed is the man that maketh the name Yahuwah his trust and respecteth not the proud such as turn aside the lies. That's exactly That's awesome. You can see what it really says. Awesome. It does not say the Lord. It says the name Yahuwah. So it's specifically saying he that maketh the name Yahuwah his trust and respecteth not the proud such as turn aside the, from the lies. And, and that speaks volumes today considering what we just saw displayed a few days ago now i'm gonna gonna skip a little bit further down to um you know a little further into psalms um where we have the name yod heh vav heh and the name you who are coming together at a 90 degree angle so um let's just start here with kadosh yahua and right under that is psalm 107 6 um then uh, they cried unto Yahuwah in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Why? Because in a time of distress, we're supposed to call upon him. Right? I mean, that's what the word says. We're seeing that reflected in these, in these codes. It's very consistent um, with what he says. Um, Psalm 113, verse 1. Praise ye Yahuwah, praise ye Servants of Yahuwah, praise the name of Yahuwah. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah from the, this time forth forevermore. Wow. Now, forevermore means forevermore, guys. It doesn't mean, you know, sometimes or part-time. Listen, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Yahuwah's name is to be praised. So from sun up to sundown, every day, 365, his name is to be praised. Mm-hmm. That's what it says. Um, you know, skipping right on over here to the uh, other side here, we got 116. I oh, mean, you know, uh, verse three and four. I called upon the name of Yahuwah. Oh, Yahuwah, he beseeched thee, deliver my soul. The gracious is Yahuwah and righteous. Yea, our Elohim is merciful. Yahuwah preserved the simple. As I was brought low, he helped me. Uh, and then, right here in the blue with uh, the two names coming together. This is Psalm 118. And it says in verse 26, bless is he that come in the name of Yahuwah. We have blessed you out of the house of Yahuwah. And it goes on. Uh, Yahuwah is the Elohim. He has shown us light. Uh, Bind the sacrifice with cords, even the horns of the altar. Thou art my Elohim. I will praise thee. Thou art my Elohim. I will exalt thee. Right, uh, and then we'll go to this one. Here's another one in um, 124, and I love how these are clustered so close together. Um, David was on on a, you know, <laughs> a, he was on the name really hard on these uh, verses. Uh, our help is in the name of Yahuwah, who made heaven and earth, and then. Come to this one, uh, 129, verse 8. Um, again, neither do they say which go by, say, Blessing of Yahuwah be upon you. We bless you in the name of Yahuwah. And then uh, finally, I think this is the last one, 135, verse 1. I was on that exact one yesterday. <laughs> I praise the Adonai, praise ye the name of Yahuwah, praise him, O servants of Elohim. Ye that stand in the house of Elohim, in the courts of the house of our Elohim, praise uh, the Adonai, for the Adonai is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is pleasant. Um, and it's over and over again. Oh, here's some more. A couple more. What is this one? 148, verse 13. 
let, he, let them that praise the name of Yahuwah, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even the children of Israel, a people uh, near him, praise Yahuwah. And then uh, I think finally we have, um, uh, this is verse 5. So let's go back up to verse 5 there. <clears throat> Let them that praise the name of Yahuwah, for he commanded and they were created. Um, so just make sure that's it. Yep, that's it. So just in one table, restore the name Yahuwah. Um, we were able to find all of that in, in uh, close proximity and, and related to one another, all these different terms. And if I, I think I have a couple more to show. Um, this is another one of restore the name, same kind of thing, finding, finding these anomalies. This is not as work as, as the other one is there, but um, same thing. We've got the name Yahuwah, and in the time of distress, um, and then it says in Jerusalem, uh, he, uh, make a house for his holy name forever, right? Uh, and then, of course, let's read these uh, these verses. There are some that are pretty powerful. Um, see, we're in um, Joel, <laughs> uh, chapter 3. You guys know what happens in chapter 3? Going into 4, let's see. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, moon into blood. The great and terrible day of Yahuwah has come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon what? Mm. The name Yahuwah shall be delivered. That's important. All right. And then we got uh, Psalm 91. Guys, Psalm 91 has a qualifier. Did you know that? It does. It does not apply to everyone. I know some Christians want to believe that. I didn't write it. The Father put this here. He is the one that declared this. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou, uh, thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Why am I starting at verse 4? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under his, uh, the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahuwah, he is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, in which I trust. Surely I shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the, from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with the feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be, be thy uh, shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of terror by night, nor by the arrow that flyeth by day, nor by the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor destruction that wasteth in noonday, a thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but not it shall not come to thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. And this, what this means is you won't experience the wrath that the wicked will, but you will see it. You'll witness what is taking place. There will, uh, excuse me, because thou hast made Yahuwah, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh to thy dwelling. For he shall give charge his angels, excuse me, give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And there shall, and there shall bear thee with his hands, lest thou dash your foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, and a young lion and the dragon shall not trample under thy feet. Uh, because he had set his love upon me, Listen to what Yahuwah says. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Why? Because he hath known my name. And this is why Psalm 91 does not apply to everybody. And that's going to hurt some people's feelings, I guarantee you. But I didn't write it. It says, because he has known my name, he shall call upon me and I will answer. Because the word says in a day of distress, if you call upon his name, he will deliver you. So here it is, a qualifier and a, another proof that the name is important in Psalm 91. Because he hath known my name, he shall call upon me and I will answer. I will be with him in Zarah, which is distress, in trouble. 
I will deliver him and honor him. That's a promise, folks. When you stand on the name, when you make the name your, your strong tower, guess what? You are covered. You are absolutely covered. I want to take you to my most favorite verse that appeared in these, uh, these codes, and I think it's a, a very powerful one um, declared by David. This is, this is amazing. All right, so back to the original. We're going to go to the words of David as a little boy, right? This is not the Psalms. This is in Samuel 1. You'll find this. This is what he says to Goliath. Right. This is what he says to Goliath. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Now look what little David says. Then David said to the Philistine, thou come to, with me to me with the sword and with the spear and with the javelin. But I come to thee in what? The name of Yahuwah Zavaot and the, the Elohim of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast taunted. This day will you who have delivered thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and I will take thy head off thee, and I will give the carcasses of uh, the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the earth and the wild beasts. That is powerful. Little David, who's got a couple of rocks and a slingshot, says to the great giant, not so, uh, Goliath, I come to you in the name of Yahuwah Zavu, and, and the rest it, is history. And it's ri it's written just as it is. <laughs> that mm -hmm. that Shen Mam Yod He Wav He Zava O Yahuwah. Yeah, right there. And that's it. Um, so so that's why I got so far. You know, to me, uh, it got me really excited to see all of these. Uh, anomalies to coming together, confirming what I knew to be true in the first place, that um, there's no question we are supposed to declare his name, uh, stand upon his name, you know, exalt his name. Um, the, the, the words are true, and it, and it reverberates in, in these codes um, all over. Um, and, you know, Jonathan, um, even it's like, Almost the whole world knows about the Lord's Prayer, at least every so-called Christian. Mm -hmm. And right off the bat, it says um, instruction for prayer. So, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yeah. So, right there, Amen. If, if we didn't have such dull ears our whole <laughs> lives. Point. Very good point, sister. We would, we would have thought for ourselves a little bit instead of just we get so used to saying something right that it, we become dull to it these catchphrases that teachers yeah. and pastors like to spark off it's like a parrot um oh he, mm -hmm. he knows my heart or or it's nailed to the cross what are some other ones um um uh, once saved yeshua, always yeshua saved. Is, our is our sabbath yeah we don't have to keep the sabbath yeshua is our sabbath Right, all these catchphrases that these pastors and teachers start, that people start to to mimic and say over and over again, as if it's the truth, right? <laughs> and it's it's uh, faulty and um, the road to destruction when you start doing that and not thinking for yourself. And that's a good uh, Yeshua says, "Hallowed be Thy name." Now, John Pounder's argument was that Yeshua didn't use the name in the prayer, therefore he wasn't saying the name. Uh, however, I just showed you in John five forty three where he said, I come not in my name, but I come in my father's name and you wouldn't receive me. I see that with Christians today. Yeshua still comes in his father's name and you receive him not. Now that's, that's speaking to somebody directly. Uh, I'll let that person decide who that is. So you can't tell me Yeshua didn't come in the name. He didn't come teaching the name when it's, when he says out of his own mouth in John 17, Father, I taught them your name, 
A little further down, Father, I seal them in your name. A little further down, Father, I send them out in your name. Right? Over and over again, something about the name. And, and incidentally, that chapter is a uniting chapter under the name. Over and over again, he said, Father, you and I are one. Right? What is mine is yours. What is yours is mine. Let them also be one with us. Those, I mean, he's trying to unite us in the name. Now, Donald reminded me of, of, of a guy who, when I first started teaching the name and made that transition, okay, this is something important. A longtime subscriber who was in the hospital, <clears throat> had diabetes, very sick. The guy was about to lose both of his legs. He was like septic. He was dealing with blood infections and all kinds of sickness. And he just got all over me and Darla attacking. He was like, hey, I, this sacred name stuff, you've lost me. I've been a subscriber for a long time. I'm never going to watch you again. Yada, yada, yada. This is, you know, we're not supposed to be saying his name. We're, we're, we're not Jewish, right? And had all these, all this stuff he was saying coming against the name. Well, lo and behold, the Holy Spirit worked on him because he had told me, Jesus is all the name I need. I've been calling on Jesus all my life. And I simply said, how's that working out for you? And I, I assume that he took some, you know, inventory of his own life because he came back and said, you know, you're, you're, you're right. I'm coming against you and Darla with the name and I'm sitting in a hospital bed about to lose my legs, calling on the name Jesus and I'm not getting healed. He's not healing me. And Jonathan, look what happened during the, um, the volcanoes and the lava flow and you put his name on that property. Very good point. And look what happened to me in the hurricane in Florence. And we were in Michigan, but we put his name over our property yeah. in North okay. Carolina. I mean, we have proof. <laughs> Absolutely, because he, 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 he moves when you, when you yeah. call upon his name. And here's what happened with that guy. The Holy Spirit worked on him. He eventually come back and apologized to Darla and myself for, for coming against the name because he had, it occurred to him, you know, I've been calling on Jesus and I'm not getting healed. And there's, so something's not going on. Right. So he, he made the, the declaration. I've been calling on Jesus all my life and he's been there for me. And, and, and I simply said, well, how's that working out for you, brother? Cause it looks to me like something's not working. You're in a hospital in a bad state and you got diabetes and you're about to have both legs amputated. Well, he came around and he became a supporter of the name. Now, Paula just brought up something that I wasn't even thinking about, but just a year ago, our friend Jason uh, Twillman here in Hawaii uh, was living in with a, with a, a group of what's called a Hui uh, in Kapoho. There's about 20 or 30 of them in there, right? The lava was coming down straight for their property. Five lobes. And then lobes are little fingers that are flowing downhill through the woods and coming down toward it. Five of them. Now, out of all of those lobes, all right, and if you recall, we were, we were, you know, taking pictures down there. We heard cows in distress. The cows had to be rescued, things like that. That lobe was coming straight for Jason's house. That lobe was the only one that stopped when we started praying in the name. It stopped, guys. It, it, it halted at the neighbor above uh, Jason, just above him. The neighbor's house and everything was taken. Only about a third of her property was left. Um, and then it stopped right there. It didn't move anymore. Now, every other lobe, mile, right? yeah, like that. about a quarter mile. Every other lobe, every other eruption lobe that was flowing toward the sea made it to the sea. It did not stop. It kept going. Only one lobe stopped. And, and a matter of fact, Yahuwah had opened up the ground right next to his house and allowed the lava that was still flowing to go into that, that large crack in the ground and bypassed his house. Now say, oh, that's just simple luck, whatever. But out of 2,000 people that lost their homes and their farms, and over 8,000 acres covered. You telling me just a stroke of luck, this one guy who we did decide to call upon the name and it was just a fluke. It was just accident. You'll never convince me of that. 
we witness the power of the Most High and His name. Because you, you can't stop that lava, guys. We saw lava go uphill. Am I, kid, am I lying? We saw lava go uphill. It's not like water where it flows down and goes. Uh, it, it does that too, but it will also go uphill. And nothing was stopping this lava. Everything was being consumed. Cars, vehicles, trees, everything. Uh -huh. But in this one place, it stopped. That, to me, says there's power in his name. So what do you say about the people who say, well, name in Hebrew actually means character or, and reputation. It doesn't mean it's proper name. We're taking it out of context. Well, you know, when, when Moses declared his name and when Moses erected a banner that said, Yahuwah Nisi, Yahuwah is my banner, um, he was declaring this. He wasn't saying, you know, the character of Yahuwah is my banner. And we're not to speak Brother, his name. Right, and we're not supposed to speak his name. No, he was declaring the name and the character of Yahuwah in that name at the time, which was he is my banner, or he is our banner, right? Yahuwah Nisi. Um, Brother Johnson, didn't you do that for your daughter's favorite swimming hole or something like that too? What now? Didn't yes, you do that for your brother's famous or for your your daughter's famous swimming hole or something like that? It was getting ready to come down into the swimming hole. Oh, you're talking about you the ponds. Now that that actually that low kept going. It 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 destroyed everything that went down to the sea. But um, I don't recall praying uh, the name over that place though. I, I might have made the statement that this was my our favorite place to go, uh, but I don't remember going down there and actually you know praying the name and putting the name somewhere. I may have said that, but I don't remember. Uh, but it did take that, that hot pond. Um, oh, wow. But the other place up at Jason's, there's no question. Uh, we walked around his property all the way around it and uh, praying in the name. Um, and that, that, that make, what happened on Jason's property makes me think of Revelation chapter 12, where there's a flood that comes and the earth opens up and swallows the flood. And yeah. you have to ask, what are they doing? They're calling right. upon his name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, don't let anybody ever tell you that there's no power in the name or he doesn't move. Guys, you got to you gotta step out in faith and, and watch him work, right? And that's what we did. Uh, it was, listen, when, when you're a homeowner or a landowner and you see an unstoppable force coming at you, you know, you, you just can't go out there and spray it with a water hose and just stop it. It's unstoppable, right? What can you do but call upon his name and, and allow him to work? He is the only one that can stop those kinds of things. And that's exactly what we saw. Um, you know, the pit that, that was opened by Jason's house, that the lava that did come by his house actually went into that pit and uh, nothing was destroyed on Jason's property. Not one hair on his head was harmed uh, he has got a great um, testimony and he's he's very uh when we talk about that he gets really big smiles because let me tell you something i'm sitting there trying to con i'm trying to console my friend you know there's a video of me with my arm around him and i'm saying jason how do you feel about it brother you know because at that point the lava was still coming and you should see his eyes swell up with tears he was lost for words he, what can you do you you can't stop it on your own power and that's that's where you know we prayed and um yeah and every time we talk about it he gets a real big smile on his face because there are people in his own community guys that are that are pagans that were praying to pele right praying to pele putting out offerings to pele like tea and you know they do the gin thing right all of those people's homes and properties were taken that were praying to pele okay Pele didn't stop. No lava. The Most High Elohim, Yote Vave, stopped the lava in its tracks. Amen. Uh, to me, that's, that's powerful. It's a testimony un, unto uh, what his word says. Good to see you, Rick, joining us. I just saw you there, brother. Hey, how are you? Very good. Can you hear me? We can. Yeah. Okay, great. You know, the biggest thing for me, and the thing that really shocked me at the time was the fact that the name was hidden. I mean, 
John Pounder says the name isn't hidden. It, it is hidden. It was hidden. We didn't have access to it. It was there, just like the Dead Sea Scrolls. But right now, it's been revealed. I mean, 1,500, 18, 1,900 years of Catholicism buried the name. They buried it. That's right. And then the King James, they, they went with it. Yep. They, I mean, in other words, they kept it hidden. So this, so the fact that 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 it's been revealed speaks volumes to me, and and it's I consider it, and, and I'll shut up after this. I consider it a blessing, a true blessing, that I have the privilege of of knowing His name. Amen. Amen. Uh, others may write it off. Um, yes. I am not writing it off uh, as just, oh, it's just commonplace. It is not commonplace. It is the name. That's right. It's the power we've been given. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and we've been given that power. We've been given that 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 blessing. I, 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 we've been. It's just one of those kinds of things that. You know, you don't take it for granted, and and you definitely don't insult others who are using the name. I I'm sorry. You can cut this part out if you want, Jonathan. I don't care. But there needs to be a course correction I agree. because Yeshua and you know I like everything that that John's been doing and things like that. But you know he crossed the line. He crossed the line, and I hope he walks it back. Uh, for 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 his reasons, not mine. For his reasons, yeah. um, because there, there's something there's something so powerful about it, and 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 just like you just got done, scripture after scripture after scripture. I don't care whether you're talking about the Old Testament. I don't care whether you're talking about the New One. It doesn't matter to me. It's there. They buried it. It's been revealed. And hallelujah to that. Hallelujah. And you're hallelujah. right. It has been the, the organized religion that's that's eroded and, and concealed the name. And it has not always been revealed. Even in the last 20 to 50 years, people were not talking about the name. It's only been this last day's remnant that's, uh, you know, this movement, what they call it, sacred name movement, right? As if this is a derogatory thing or a bad thing. Let me just tell you this. I would rather be in that category than coming against the name on the day of judgment, guys. Because I'm tell you what, there's scripture that says, but we cast out demons in your name, Jesus. We're healing the sick in your name, Jesus. Right? And what does he say? I don't know who you are. And that's an intimacy thing. First name basis. When we know your name. Like I know your name, Javon or Paula. We're on first name basis. But you know, if I'm going around, you know. <laughs> First of all, that has only been around about 500 years. So it makes sense to me that Yeshua was saying this because that person comes in his own name in the Catholic Church, by the way, Jesus Christ. He comes in his own name. Yeshua, out of his own mouth, says, I don't come in my own name, but in the Father's name. Now, it should be a, a, you know, a signal to you of what's going on here. There's a bait and switch that has happened within the church, right? You've been given this this beat up uh, powerless person on a cross, right? Because that's who they pray to every day is this Jesus on the cross, right? Crucified. Every time they do the communion, they crucify Yeshua over and over and over again, right? So there's no, you know, why, why, why don't we have pictures of Yeshua coming out of the, out of the, the grave with the Catholic church? It is always Yeshua is still on the cross. And part of communion, a part of the Eucharist is they crucified Christ daily, right? Um, that's, that's not my Messiah. My Messiah came out of the grave. He didn't stay on the cross, right? And he didn't come in his own name. He came in the Father's name and in the power of the name that was given him. You've got to look at the scripture. It says that he was given dominion by the Ancient of Days. The Son of Man was given dominion by the Ancient of Days right? That means he breached the gap between 
us and the Father. He repaired that gap so there was access to the Father. Otherwise, we didn't have access anymore. It was severed. This is what it means by you can only come to the Father through me. It doesn't, it doesn't mean ignore the Father. I am now the one that you come to. Yeshua never meant that. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. The way to the Father is through me. He breached, uh, he, he fixed that breach, guys. Uh, he wants in instituting a new religion called Christianity. <laughs> I mean, um, I have a presentation about the, this confusion that's, that's going on. It actually takes us all the way back to when Yahusha uh, brought the Israelites back into uh, in Israel. I'll just share my screen. Yeah. I actually shared this with Dr. Pigeon. And this, this explains a lot because this goes all the way back to the beginning. And this also shows us why they weren't supposed to say the name of the enemy or a foreign uh, Gimel Dalit when they went into the land. Okay, you see the word Baal Gad here. Mm -hmm. Baal, you have Baal, 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 Baal. Um, if you take the first three letters of Elohim, actually the first two, El, which is Yahuwah's name, um, and you, you apply the bet, you would have Baal. It's a very easy uh, etymolo etymological um, error that you can make because it sounds the same as Baal here. Bet Aleph Lamed, all you have to do is change the Aleph to a ion and you would have Baal. Okay, so I believe this is where uh, a lot of the confusion came from and uh, when, when Yeshua said uh, that there would be those who came and who will come and say, we cast out demons in your name, he'll say, I never knew you. Uh, if you look at Hosea chapter 2, verse 16, and it shall be in that day that Yahuwah saith Yahuwah that thou shalt call me Ishi and shall no more call me Bali. So this, this name problem has been going on for a very long time, even in the time of Hosea. And he's prophesying, he's prophesying about, about his name. You'll no longer call me these names Bali because that's, if you look at the possessor of me, ba, Bali, ba, Bet, Ayan, Lamed, it's the same thing. But he wants him to call them husband. <laughs> well, that... I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to show the etymological error yeah, yeah. that uh, people uh, are making and how this has continued. And even in our today, if this has continued. If, if this is a problem today because people... They think that the word Baal is is actually his name, and it's not. It's it's a it's it's an etymo etymological problem with adding the bet as a part of the pronunciation when it's supposed to be a prefix. It's supposed to be an in Elohim, not Baal. <laughs> okay, I've shared I've shared this with uh, Doctor Pigeon, and he agrees with me. It's actually very easily um, that error, but uh, that's not the only place. Uh, where you get Molech, the the um, the jots and the tittles have been changed in or, in order to twist the word from Melech, which means king, to Molech, which is a false deity. Um, can I um, say um, something that I saw in um, the Word Meaning Book of Hallelujah Scriptures? Um, I noticed there's this word. Baal Ladin, which means um, Baal is Lord. But um, if you think of the movie Aladdin, they've just taken the bet away. So it's Aladdin instead of Baal Ladin. It's very interesting. Baal is yeah. Lord. Wow. Al Aladdin. Can I also but this is, this is the reason why they weren't supposed to speak his name. The name of the foreign gods or deities is because Satan had already orchestrated it to sound almost identical to Eli, to El. 
if you add the bet in front, it sounds like ball. And and he he knew how to twist his word. Um, and again, even even the Queen of Heaven, you have in here mm -hmm. La Mo Molakov. So it's it's about the way that the name is pronounced, uh, at Eli, uh, and how the enemy has twisted that. Anyways, can I say something? I, I just wanted to show that because uh, that I do, that I do believe that that has a lot to do with a, with what our with what Doctor Pigeon was trying trying to relate here about the name is that there's there's a twisting and there's an error going on. And that that's where has led mankind astray in, into believing that. Um, go go does, ahead. Does he have a Bible in front of them? A Hallelujah Scripture Bible? Or? I do. Um, if you go to Psalms um, twenty nine, um, I noticed it just as Jonathan was going through all the Psalms before. Um, um twenty nine. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, his name is mentioned like 18 times in the whole chapter. Oh, the, yeah, the whole, yeah, the whole chapter. It's like um, the most amount of times that I found his um, name in any one chapter. That's a short chapter. It's, um, yeah, it's mentioned like 18 times. If you can... That was Psalm 29. 29? Psalm 29. So that is the one chapter in the entire book with the highest frequency of his name being mentioned. Yeah, that's the that's what I've noticed. Um, is wow. that it's it's the only chapter that's had the most amount of mention of his I name see. straight after. It. Yeah, it's nearly it's mentioned in just about every verse. Thanks for bringing that to our attention, brother. Exactly eighteen times. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. You know, also. Um, the, one of the commandments say, thou shalt not take thy Lord, well, thou shalt not take Yahuwah's name in vain, right? Well, if you look at that word vain a little deeper, that means bringing it to naught. So even choosing to not yeah. say it is bringing his name to naught. So when you choose to not say it, you're even breaking that commandment. That's a good point, um, Michael. Um, people, you know, when you... When you hear doubt, you know, when you look at the Ten Commandments and you look at it through the eyes of King Jimmy, it says one thing on the surface. Thou shalt not, you know, take the Lord thy God's name in vain. Okay, and then most Christians will say, well, that's G-O-D, right? I had somebody get really mad at me <laughs> because I was saying, wait a minute, guys. God is not a name of our Elohim. That is that is a title at best, but they, they got mad because they were certain this is God's name is God. His name is God, right? Michael brought up a really good point because the, the actual translation of taking my name in vain means not to bring the name to vast nothingness. Vast nothingness. Isn't that what it is, Darla? Yes. She's walked out of the room. That's exactly what he says. Don't make my name into vast nothingness, which is basically erasing the name, hiding the name. Refusing right? to speak the name. Yeah. He's putting hands around it. That's blaspheming the name, all right? is bringing it to nothing, obscuring the name, hiding the name, changing the name. Diminishing. Diminishing the name. That's what it, That's a, probably a better English translation of what that means. Do not diminish my name. Do you know how many people break that commandment on a daily basis, but yet claim to be one of his children? Yeah. Hypocrites. So that's why it's important to look at the at the Hebrew because a lot of times in those in those root words, uh, when you drill down on it, it takes you to you know, wow, whoa, I'm looking at this differently, you know, because there's something lost on the surface with these translations, especially when they've been translated over and over and over again, you know, from Latin to Greek to English and so on, right? 
it, it, it continues to erode, right? And you talked about Zephaniah 3, 9, right? Like this is Yahuwah's will is that we are restored in his name. Very good point. In the last days, all right, so, in a, so a time that the Father has already determined at, for an end time remnant, he will return us to a pure language. Now, what, what language would probably fit that? Because I'm, I'm not biased, but I do have a strong belief that the intimate tongue of heaven is an Aramaic or a Hebrew or a Semitic language, right? I'm not saying it's exactly Hebrew, though it could be. I mean, you have revealed himself in, at Mount Sinai to Moses, right? Moses spent years in the courts of Pharaoh as a, as a prince of Egypt. It is highly likely that Moses being brought up from a baby to a grown man spoke Egyptian. Why didn't Yahuwah reveal himself to Moses in Egyptian? I personally believe it's paleo. Right, I do too. I believe it's that, it's that ancient Semitic language that he revealed himself in, in a form of Hebrew at Sinai. So, that, I mean, that, that tells me um, there's something going on here. And, and I think that, that when you and Moses were together, he learned language. In other words, um, it wasn't like he had to go to school for years and learn Hebrew. I think it was done by osmosis or something, just by being in the presence of the Most High. Uh, this is how he recorded um, the law, is in this Aramaic language. <clears throat> that's an opinion. I can't prove that with codes or, or plain text scripture, but that's just something he's laid on me is, um, this intimate language that he's revealed to Moses and that we're studying, we believe to be Hebrew, I think that's what he's going to return us all to back to one day. Uh, when he says, I'll return them back to a pure language and they will serve me. I mean, his, his name is revealed in the Paleo-Hebrew at first. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, you can find his name still even if it's a Greek manuscript or Aramaic, it is the name is still preserved in the Paleo Hebrew. The scribe took the time to switch from Greek back to the original language and, and record the name of the Most High. In every case, guys, not one mm -hmm. time do we see a translation of the name, ever. I heard the Ten Commandments, the, the Ten Commandments that were written on the stones were in Paleo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in the movie uh, Ten Commandments, Darla uh, figured this out. The what, what was those? What are those people called that do the props? Prop, prop masters. Darla's like the prop master in the uh, 1950s Deville movie Ten Commandments was so attention to detail that if you go and look at that movie, the <coughs> the actual props are written in Paleo Hebrew. Awesome. Yeah. I think the paleo is just a fascinating thing. The, so. other, the other prop you picked up was Raiders of the Lost Ark. The little scarab, um, like a uh, winged well, the disc. Of the staff of Ra, the, the headpiece. There you go, Giovanna, the name. Um, um, on that little circle piece that the German gets burned in his hand has paleo Hebrew letters all the way around it. This is so. What? How old would this one be then, Jonathan? Is that Aramaic? That looks like yeah. um, a, a form of Aramaic or um, Arabic, which is also, guys, Arabic is also a Semitic language. Uh, this one, this one's pretty cool too. Uh, nice. That's really cool. This is cool. I would like to that 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 that's that's cool. cool. So that's a stencil, that's right? That's really cool. Um, I've been naughty. I, I've been um, doing some graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> Blessed graffiti. Darla oh, man. Kodesh yeah. graffiti. Awesome. Hey, guys. I wanted to read this from uh, Jubilees chapter 12. And um, I, I just have it on my, um, my phone because I gave my hard copy away. Ah, missed it ever since. Okay. Um, this is uh, Jubilees 12, starting in verse 22. And this is um, 
let me see, let me back up to where he starts praying. Um, so, and it starts in verse 19. And he prayed that night and said, My Elohim, El Elyon, you alone are my Elohim, and you and your dominion have I chosen. And you have created all things, and all things that are the work of your hands. Deliver me from the hands of evil Ruach, the spirits, who have dominion over the thoughts of men's hearts, and let them not lead me astray from you, my Elohim, and establish me and my seed forever, that we go not astray from henceforth and forevermore. And he said, Shall I return into Ur of the Kazdim, who seek my face, that I may return to them? Am I to remain here in this place? The right path before you prosper it in the hands of your servant, that he may fulfill it, and that I may not walk in the deceitfulness of my heart, O Elohai. And he made an end of speaking and praying, and behold, the word of Yahuwah was sent to him through me, saying, and I think this is like a messenger speaking, through me, saying, Get you up from your country, and from your kindred, and from the house of your father, unto a land which I will show you, and I shall make you a great and numerous nation. And I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be blessed in the earth. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed, and I will bless them that bless you, and curse them that curse you. And I will be an Elohim to you, and your son, and to your son's son, and to all your seed. Fear not from henceforth, and unto all generations of the earth, I am your Elohim. And you, Elohim, said, open his mouth and his ears, that he may hear and speak with his mouth with the language which has been revealed. For it had ceased from the mouths of all the children of men from the day of the overthrow of Babel. So this was ever after um, the languages were oh, wow. founded in Babel. And I opened his mouth and his ears and his lips, and I began to speak with him in Ibrit, in the tongue of the creation. And he took the Sepharim, the books of his fathers, and these were written in Ibrit. And he transcribed them, and he began from henceforth to study them. And I made known to him that which he could not understand. And he studied them during the six rainy months. And it came to pass in the seventh year of the sixth week that he spoke to his father and informed him that he would leave Haran to go to the, into the land of Canaan to see it and return to him. So anyway, there it's telling us that um, after the confounding the confusion of the languages that he restored by commandment of Yahuwah, the Ibrit language, the language of creation to Fro Abram. Um, which, which chapter? Which chapter? This is chapter twelve in the book of Jubilees. Okay, okay. The whole chapter. Yeah. Cool. I'll read that again tonight. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty phenomenal because um, that seems to be what is happening. After people started getting called out of the churches, Yahuwah started teaching them from his word. Um, one of the first things he taught me is, you know, they took my name out of my own word. So that was very yeah, well, profound for me. Um, yeah, I was... Um, go ahead. My um, granddad, when I was a little kid, um, we used to have little... Bible meetings and he we were reading the, through the Bible and he gets to the to the part where um, G-O-D is and he doesn't pronounce it and I asked him why don't you pronounce it and then he said I don't know what it means and then um, then I, I that stuck with me through my whole life and now now that I'm older uh, I found out you know what the name is but then also I found out that Jesus was is not the real name. It wasn't just the father's name they did it too. It was Yeshua's name too. And yeah. when I found that out, that was I was I was just shocked. <laughs> That's awesome that you know he wouldn't say it just because he didn't know what it means. You know, didn't have the research yeah. and everything. Not too many people you come by will do that. Yeah. The thing that got me um, going from jesus is that when i found out that it did not translate into hebrew yeah like nowhere yeah. in israel was there you couldn't translate it into hebrew and i that's what got me thinking yeah for, for me too also it was it was like what kind of uh what kind of a jewish mother would name her son 
Jesus. That doesn't make sense to me. There's no J in Hebrew. Both, yeah. if, you've, if you've seen Passion of the Christ or the movie Reason, they use Yeshua in both of the films. Yes. But it's, it's translated Jesus in Icelandic. But ca can I share a little bit, very short? Sure. Uh, Jonathan, can you, can you turn off the recording? In the in, uh, uh, etymological, Klein's etymological dictionary, is it Sharon? It's rendering. Uh, there it goes. All right, so it has it as Yod, I think that's a, a Wa, a Zion. Yod, Zion, Wav, Aleph, Yod, Ta, Tet. Um, Jesuit, modern El Jesuita from Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you can closely relate Jesus to Jesuit. Yeah. I mean, that's where the word comes from. And you're right. And see, that spelling right there spells Jesuit. And that is Yod, Vav, Zion. All of uh, Yotet, which is uh, the phonically spelling of Jesuit, because there is no J, right? It's Jesuit. Also the right. Yeah. So that's that's really interesting. That's where they come, where the name actually comes from, and in how it ended up in the scriptures, guys, because it was it was not there originally. It was Yeshua or a version of Joshua, which incidentally from. Hebrew to English, the translation from one to the other, there's no need for gymnastics through other languages, is Joshua. How did we get from Yeshua to Jesus? The explanation is through the Catholic Church, folks. Now, now that, that really upsets Christians, and I get it. We were saved under the name Jesus, all of that. But here's the thing. Under deception or, you know, something where the whole – Congregation is, is into play here. The ignorance. There's no, there's no consequence to something that's done under ignorance. So you calling on the name Jesus or being healed in the name Jesus is because you have faith that the one that was called Yeshua is this one called Jesus, right? Even though there was a switch, guys, and you can track this back. It's about 500 years. Comes from the word Jesuit. Jesuit, which has has I mean. It does not compare with Joshua. It doesn't translate over. And why we choose this one name in all of creation that we're going to translate, like, I mean, what, would you translate a Chinese person's name? If a Chinese person's name is Sung Young Moon, or not, that sounds more like Korean. Let's say they're Korean, right? Even in English, guess what you say? Sung Young Moon. There's no translation of the name. So why are we tr taking the, the name of its original language and changing it to something else because you speak English? You're not recording, brother. Uh, it's showing the